You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of um, Ice Tea. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. I wonder if I've got any more editing to do on this uh, on today's video. We shall see. But anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. Hey, you up? I never heard such a large whisper in my life. It's not loud precisely, but it fills so much of the air that it smothers me with its soft with its soft breathiness. It's like hearing a character whisper in a movie theater. I wasn't I wasn't up, but his soft, comforting position is the nicest way I've been roused in ages. Aww. When I open my eyes, I see the cautious, caring face of Gavin taking up most of my field of vision. His head rests on the pillow opposite mine. He placed me on a spare pillow last night after an hour or so of snuggling. None of our usual positions work, so I ended up lying on my stomach on top of his chest while he stroked my back. I nestled into his soft, sparse hair, and he avoided my tail for the first few times he stroked me. I had to tell him he could touch it before he tried. The stroking felt better the, long the longer each pass was, and when he ran his finger from my neck to the tip of my tail, I felt a relief that surprised that surpassed the stress I'd felt these last few days. His chest rose and fell in time with his hand, which rocked me into a relaxed, a relaxed torpor. I could have stayed there forever, but Gavin didn't want to roll over me and roll over me in the middle of the night, so he set me, so he set me on a pillow instead. Thankfully, I didn't feel the need to shred, to shred the pillowcase in the middle of the night. I hold a hand out, and he reaches with that with, with his finger for me to rest it on it. Yeah, I'm up. Did you sleep well? Yeah, I slept great. How about you? It was wonderful, thank you. Probably the best sleep I've had in months. Oh, good. I was worried you'd feel an earthquake every time I moved around. Guess the memory foam works when it works as advertised. Then again, I was never actually on the mattress. Yeah, it's one of those box mattresses advertised on podcasts. Got it, got it pretty recently, actually. You're uh, the first person I've shared it with. I place a paw over my heart into the tuft of fur on my chest. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. I wish I could take advantage of the whole bed. Yeah, hopefully you'll get that chance soon. He looks away after realizing the connotation of what he said. If, you know, you think you'd want to stay over again after you're back to normal. I'm not able to answer immediately. There's so many discreet things that need to change to get back to normal, and I have to go through one of them one by one. But as soon as I do, I'm able to enthusiastically say, Yeah, I'd love to. Gavin, Gavin sighs in relief. Oh, good! It would have been okay if last night was just something really specific you needed in the moment, but I'd love to do something later that's more, you know, typical. I really liked last night, but hopefully that's... That's not just how I have sex from now on. Yeah, let's have a rain check on normal-sized, full-human, uh, sex. He blushes and looks away again. I can see the individual capillaries on his face. I can't help but let out a sleepy giggle at seeing someone be that large and that embarrassed. Yeah, let's. We both painted ourselves into somewhat of an awkward corner, so we just stop, so we just stay laying there, half-grinning. Weird that this, that this was the thing that got us together. Seriously! Was this something you thought about doing? Minus all the mouse stuff, of course. Like, have you ever wanted to ask me out? He grimaces. Yeah, it's uh, kind of tough being a straight guy and answering that. Like, you don't want to play into that stereotype of wanting to bone every female friend you have, you know? I nod. But I wasn't lying about always thinking you were pretty and being excited about going on the fake date with you. I just took that date. I just took that date night as it was intended and enjoyed it for what it was worth. And since then, it seemed that uh, I'd be way more appreciated as a good friend than a boyfriend, you know? Huh, I guess thinking back, you're probably right. I don't know how much longer I could have lasted without you as a friend. That's pretty emotionally smart of you, honestly. Thanks. I mean, I probably can't be too proud of that without proving you wrong. I chuckle. And basically, the whole time I've known you, it seemed like you needed a supportive friend to help you deal with the bullshit, not a dude trying to score a date with you. Yeah, you're right. I pause before letting, in, letting out an annoyed groan. Uh, but we could have been dating this whole time. I could have had a tall, handsome boyfriend who shares my hobby and has a nicer apartment next to my job. That would have been way better. That, the laugh that rumbles in his massive chest makes my heart skip a beat. Yeah, I would have had a lot more, a lot fewer lonely nights if I had a pretty girlfriend these last few months. Hopefully we have plenty of opportunities to make up for it in the future. I re I'd really like that. I say it in such a soft coo that I'm afraid he can't hear me, but his smile assures me that he can. There's enough time for us to bask in the happy glow a little bit longer, but tea friends will have to be open before long. He carries me, wrapped in my little handkerchief blanket, to the desk, and I change back into my dress while he changes in his room. So, you know, it is Walter time. Hmm. Alrighty. 
I'm annoyed that I'm annoyed at having to pull it back on, but that feeling is so far as far outweighed by my giddiness. When Gavin returns, I'll request a few strawberries, some crackers with peanut butter, scrambled eggs, dried apricots, sunflower seeds, apple slices, and tea. He brings the feast-sized setting over to me, and for the first time, I attempt to eat my fill without feeling self-conscious. The first few bites are cautious, but I tell myself I'll need to indulge in order to finish such a spread in time. I stuff hunks of food into my mouth at nearly the same rate I did my first morning as a mouse. This time I'm aware of what I'm doing. It's more an intentional sati satiation of desire than an unthinking submission. It's enough to quiet the concerns in my head, but it doesn't stop Gavin from taking notice. This berry's really- <laughs> Sorry, y'all. This berry's really good, then? Oh, yeah! I swallow and wipe some of the juices from my muzzle. It's all the best stuff with none of the filler in the middle. I grab one of the shelled sunflower seeds and bite it in half. The seeds are great like this, too. There's this real dense meatiness to them at the size. I crush the seed between my teeth, relishing in the satisfying sensation of cleaving it into segments. Gavin runs through a checklist in his head before he decides to speak. So, uh, should I let you know you're acting sort of mousy now? I take a too large bite of a cracker and peanut butter right as he says it, which means it's half a minute before I can respond. Nah, I know I'm indulging. I'm making a conscious decision right now. I know it definitely feels better than it should, but I, but I, know, but I know what I'm doing. I stuff a mouthful of apricot in my mouth and toil away at turning the gummy hunk into something I can swallow. So you don't think you're slipping into your instincts? Infinitely! I gulp it down. I'm just kind of riding the wave of sensation right now. My little, my little mouse heart is always racing a million miles an hour, so I gotta feed it. I figure I'll never have as good as an excuse to pick out like this. Okay, if you're sure. Yep. Thanks for speaking up, though. This is definitely the kind of stuff I want, I want you to keep an eye out for. Yeah, it's a little tough to not assume you're falling back into that behavior when your other lapses were food-based. That's understandable, so maybe I'll just use my veto power to say you don't have to worry about it this time. Or would it be more convincing if your mistress told you to? He stifles an embarrassed grin and looks away. I have to put a lid on my own cackle. I'm sorry, maybe that should stay in the bedroom. No, it's, uh, kind of fun. Oh, really? Then maybe I'll keep it up for my little pet. His little shudder might have been less obvious for a normal woman. Sure, if, you, if you'd like to. I'll just see how I feel then. I chuckle in my least dominatrixy voice. I was actually going to ask you if this sort of thing is something you do with a lot of girls. You do a lot with girls. Like, saw, like Dom sub stuff? Not really. I've held girls down when they've asked for it and talked pretty dirty sometimes, but nothing like that. And nothing in, you know, this direction. Have you? Honestly, me neither. Really? You seem pretty natural at it. Thanks, I've been in a few relationships where I'm the more dominant one, and I put handcuffs on one guy a couple times because that's what he liked. But nothing quite like that, like last night. I guess I realized I needed to really take charge if anything was going to get done. I wanted it so much that I, just, that I just did it, you know? Plus, it felt really reassuring to be in control while I'm like this. Yeah, I kind of figured. It was reassuring for me too, just knowing it was actually what you wanted. Plus, the discrepancy of such a small woman being so bossy was, well, kind of hot. It hurt I already thought it was pretty. No, I thought she was pretty. It sounds like we should stick stick with it stick with it then, at least for now. Maybe even afterwards, who knows? His skin flushes and his nostrils flare. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'll finally get to see your penis by then. Oh, um, yeah, that'd be nice. It'd probably the first time you've had sex with a guy without seeing it, huh? Sounds like you're unaware of all the ways you can have fun without one. I'll admit you're in a rare company, though. Why don't you let me know what I'm in for? It'll be fun if it's taller than me. He blushes and looks away. It's a uh, regular, it's normal, human male-sized uh, penis. Oh gosh, I didn't know it was that big. He furrows his brow. What do you mean? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little water break. Give me one second, y'all. <laughs> Guys don't brag about having a normal-sized dick. They just watch porn and have a skewed perspective about what's normal. All the best dicks I had are from guys who don't talk them up. Oh, well, uh, that's good to know, I guess. Probably not super relevant for me, though. You never know when it'll come in handy. I take a sip of tea. Oh, but I guess we should probably come up with a safe word if this Dom stuff, if the Dom stuff's gonna be a regular thing for us. Right, that's probably best practices, huh? Hmm, how about... I search for something innocuous that's less likely to make me laugh. Let's do matcha. Sounds good to me. Hopefully we won't have to use it too much. I guess that depends on if you'll be a good boy for me today. I'll try my best, mistress. See that you do. I dip my teacup in the shot glass and take a sip on my tail curls. The mouse with the bathwater. Oh god, are we getting a gamer girl, gamer, gamer mouse girl bathwater? <laughs> I'm a little bolder on the way to work this time. I peek out of Gavin's pockets for all but the riskiest moments. 
Even on the train, there's not much reason to hide. Few people can spread the effort to pay attention to the breast pocket of a random guy on their commute. Which is nice because it lets me get an even better look at everything. The sights, the especially, and especially smells of my usual commute are much more exhilarating at this size. It's hopefully the closest I'll ever come to being able to fly on the, to being a fly on the wall. I take the opportunity to get in some intense people watching. Nothing like becoming less human to make you appreciate people more. Thanks for the lift again. You're welcome. You're the lightest woman I've ever had to carry around on a train. I didn't know you had so much experience with this. I had a few friends trust me to get them home after parties. Oh, so you've been white knighting helpless girls for a while now? I, uh, try to be gentlemanly. Well, be a good boy and let me inside. Yes, ma'am. I was worried my memories could have overblown how good the shop smells, but I'm happy to discover it's just as intoxicating as I remember. Gosh, I'm never going to get tired of entering the shop like this. It makes me wonder if I should go somewhere else and see if it's just as good, like a bakery or something. They're open, they're open nice and early if you want to try tomorrow. And if I'm back to normal, we, c we can just get some celebratory croissants. Sounds like a plan. Down like a clown, Charlie Brown. He cups his hand just below his breast pocket and I, climb, and I climb out. He sets me on the counter and I dismount with much more grace than last time. There really is something to be said for the exper for experience. Want me to set, you up, set, up a cave, set up your cave for you? Actually, I thought I might start out the day with a tea bath. I figure it'll be more relaxing before a lot of customers show up. Plus, it'll keep me out of your hair. Sure, sounds reasonable. I can set you up right now if you want. Yes, please. Do you have a good idea of what you'll be working on in the meantime? Uh, still plug, still just plugging away at the, bo the box, honestly. Tried skipping to the end there initially, but I'm going to see if I can translate the whole thing to make sure we're not missing anything. That's probably for the best. Yeah, it'll just take a while. If the store's not too busy, maybe I can make it through to most of the day. Anyway, I'll draw, go draw a bath for you, my mistress. Ooh, what a thoughtful, gracious servant I've been blessed with. I must demonstrate my appreciation for him later. I, uh, look forward to it. He heads to the back with more enthusiasm than yesterday. I'm worried that the dynamic might get stale, but for now I still feel giddy when I act like his mistress. I never had an actual dom sub relationship. The idea of maintaining one sounded too daunting. If fitting one into a normal life with a job, commute bills, and chores seemed ludicrous, but there's no normal life to interrupt with Gavin. It's either this or lying in a pile of sawdust. It also makes all my requests that much more fun. I'd much rather ask for a back grab or treat if it's part of a game. I'm finally free to depend on Gavin as much as he wants me to. Okay, I stuck some lavender in there this time to vary things up a bit. That's an excellent idea. I know you. I know I kept you around for something. I hop onto his palm and give a sharp pip, a pip pip clap to hurry him to the back. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. Oh yeah, we'll pause it right here. Get some water. It's water time, y'all. One moment. Mm. Mm. Okay. The tea bath is already steaming hot and smells amazing. After setting up, he bows and I dismiss him with a flick of the wrist. I'm gonna put on some bevel. I tap my way through my music app until I pull up the album I'm looking for. I'm even more impatient this time, and my dress hasn't even fallen over by the time I hop in. Whew, ha! I raise and lower my feet as if that will affect the temperature as my tail as my tail juts out rigid. Oh. The moment I can stand it, I sit, I sit down and immerse myself into the tea once again. Ah. The tea pricks at my skin with invigorating heat. It penetrates my fur, which flutters in the subtle currents created by my entrance. The tea settles as I remain still. I'm able to recover the, my, the sense of relaxation I'd worked so hard to achieve yesterday. Before long, I've, I've surpassed that sense of relief. Maybe it's the tunes, maybe it's the fresh pastel aroma of lavender, or more likely it's the sense of relief instilled by last night's session with Gavin. A great pressure valve has been released, leaving behind a pleasant level of tension in, the pl in its place. I wonder if... I reach a hand down to graze the side of my breast. The fur on top picks up the motion and transmits it down to the nerves under my skin. My arousal swells like a wave of heat, like a wave against the seawall, but I keep my hand in place. Unlike yesterday, the sensation is welcome, and it's much less severe. There's no need to stifle the sensation, no need to reject it. No harm in being a woman taking a little pleasure from her own body. I drag the hard, slick surface of the back of my claws against my breasts. The sharp sensations seem to dull and dissipate as they hit parts of me immersed in the tea. Piercing rivulets empty into broad reservoirs of gently simmering con contentment. It's like I've somehow skipped straight to the post-orgasmic bliss. Or maybe I'm still under the effects of last night. I return to the night before, drifting on echoes of the sensations Gavin made me feel. I have no chance of my own fingers replicating the overwhelming power and size of him, so I have to get by on my memories. One hand goes between my legs and finds I'm already warm as the scented nectar I'm soaking in. I graze it with the same unhurried pace as my breasts. It's grateful for the attention, but not as desperate as it was last night. 
You know you can get much more if you just ask. Knowledge is soothing in its own way. As good as I feel right now, I better time a better time is just past the door of the shop on the shop floor. I returned my hands to the rim of the cup and leaned back. Hmm, I wonder how much convincing it would take to have Gavin come and do something for me in the break room. I chuckle as I imagine his flustered face when I order him to make me come come before the next customer requires attention. There's no doubt in my mind he'd be up to the task, but watching him fret would be half the fun. My imagination's devious enough to think of a few more ways to have fun with Gavin in the shop. Having him drink the tea I'm currently soaking in first is a thought, but there's also servicing me under the counter as he rings someone up. I wonder if there's a way to get inside his pants that's feasible. It's an excellent fodder for the simmering arousal that's just low enough to keep me relaxed. Before long, I run out of explicitly sexual scenarios, and my mind drifts to the, to be, to the merely submissive. I bet he could fan me with a little palm frond. It'd be like one of those Queen, Queen of Sheba scenes. And you'd only have to peel a couple grapes, too. My finger stirs the surface of the tea in lazy circles as I let my mind wander. My palm dips under the surface and returns with a bread with a bead of liquid kept intact by the cohesion. I move the orb of tinted liquid back and forth, watching the light glint and refract off of it. When I pull it up to my snout, I'm able to smell the silky smoothness of the tea. I spread my fingers and let the drop drip back into the cup. My thoughts grow less concrete as I surrender them to the music flowing through flowing from my phone speakers and the steam rising from the tea's surface. Every so often I'll emerge when I hear a customer into the shop or a new music track begins. For the most part, I simply let myself exist. The most I do is mouth along to a song's lyrics, forming the shapes of the words without expending the breath to vocalize them. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here, ladies and gents. Alright, thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, Alright, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!